This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. In Tucson, Arizona, a jury has refused to convict humanitarian activist Scott Warren, who faced up to 20 years in prison for providing water, food, clean clothes and beds to two undocumented migrants crossing the Sonoran Desert in southern Arizona. Warren's trial ended Tuesday in a mistrial after a deadlocked jury was unable to deliver a verdict. Eight jurors thought Warren was not guilty, four thought he was guilty. A status hearing hearing is scheduled for July 2nd. Prosecutors have declined to comment on whether they would seek a retrial against Warren. Warren briefly spoke to supporters outside Tucson's federal courthouse, where the hung jury was declared. Since my arrest in January of 2018, at least 88 bodies were recovered from the Ajo corridor of the Arizona desert. Uh, we know that's a minimum number and that many more are out there and have not been found. The government's plan in the midst of this humanitarian crisis, policies to target undocumented people, refugees and their families, prosecutions to criminalize humanitarian aid, kindness and solidarity. And now, where I live, the revelation that they will build an enormous and expensive wall across a vast stretch of southwestern Arizona's unbroken Sonoran Desert. Today it remains as necessary as ever for local residents and humanitarian aid volunteers to stand in solidarity with migrants and refugees. And we must also stand for our families, friends and neighbors in the very land itself, most threatened by the militarization of our borderland communities. I've received enormous support from family, friends, uh, lawyers, uh, and my community. Uh, thank you to everyone, and I want to say that I love you all very, very much. We love you, Scott. <laughs> um, if you can, though, uh, take a moment now and uh, get some rest. <laughs> uh, but the other men arrested with me that day, Jose Sacaria Gouday and Cristian Perez Villanueva, have not received the attention and outpouring of support that I have. I do not know how they are doing now, but I desperately hope that they are safe. Scott Warren is an activist with Ajo Samaritans and No More Deaths, which for years has left water and food in the harsh Sonoran Desert, where the temperature often reaches three digits during summer, to help refugees and migrants survive the deadly journey across the U.S. border. When Warren testified last week, he told jurors his actions were motivated by three intentions, relief of suffering, respect for human dignity, and the right to self-determination. While presenting the case against Warren, U.S. Attorney Anna Wright said, quote, he gave them food, he gave them water, he did a bad thing. This is not a case about deaths in the desert. Scott Warren was arrested January 17, 2018, just hours after No More Deaths released a report detailing how U.S. Border Patrol agents had intentionally destroyed more than 3,000 gallons of water left out for migrants crossing the border. The group also published a video showing border agents dumping out jugs of water in the desert. Hours after the report was published, authorities raided the barn, a no more deaths aid camp in Ajo, where they found two migrants who had sought temporary refuge. We're joined right now by Ryan Devereaux, staff reporter at The Intercept, who's closely covered Scott Warren's trial and the criminalization of humanitarian aid volunteers for more than a year. It's great to have you back, Ryan. Um, you've just flown back from Arizona covering this the trial that took about two weeks. Talk about the significance of the verdict. It's a hung jury. 8 for Scott Warren, uh, 8 ag uh, for against. Correct. It was an outcome that I personally wasn't expecting. I expected that this was going to go one way or the other, guilty or not guilty. Uh, the hung jury, uh, which was 
which, which came after three days of deliberation, uh, was not something I think anybody was really expecting here. It's quite a turn to a case that's already taken a lot of turns. And the story's not over uh, for Scott Warren and his defense team. This is not necessarily a defeat, but it's not a victory either. We don't yet know if the government is going to retry this case. As you mentioned at the top of the show, there's a status hearing uh, coming in July. Uh, so a lot of the questions uh, surrounding this case, its, its significance, the potential precedent it could set are still alive, and, and that precedent includes the possibility of a, of a broadened crackdown on humanitarian aid work in the desert, uh, potential targeting of, of, of folks who have undocumented people in their lives, uh, potential targeting of mixed-status families in the United States. There's a whole lot on the line uh, with respect to this case, and those questions are still very much alive. And you've said, uh, uh, Ryan, that the crucial question for the jury was about Scott Warren's intention. Explain what that means and the significance of that for the fact that there was a mistrial. Yeah, so uh, 19 months after this arrest, we've seen a lot of evidence in this case, hundreds of filings. Uh, the government brought many witnesses, as did uh, Scott's defense team, but what it all really boiled down to was an intent. Did Scott Warren intend to shield these men from law enforcement, knowing that he was in violation of the law? If so, uh, the government argued, then he was guilty. Uh, Scott Warren's attorneys said that, yeah, intent is critical to this. And Scott Warren's intent in this case was to provide humanitarian aid. And that's been his intent all along in working in the borderlands for the last four years. So jurors heard about how Scott behaved and what he did in the day, hours and days uh, after these two young men arrived at the bar in this humanitarian aid station in Ajo, Arizona. Uh, Scott Warren attended to the migrants' feet. They had blisters on their feet. One was reporting sore ribs. He took down notes about their medical conditions. He called a doctor uh, who the organization No More Desk works with, uh, has worked with for years, an award-winning physician. Um, he reported the conditions that these young men were in. Uh, he was advised that they should stay off their feet and that they should rehydrate and that volunteers should keep an eye on them for the next few days. The government, in its arguments uh, in court over the last week, had said that the notes that Scott Warren took during this period uh, were part of a cover-up. Uh, they took these notes, no more deaths, Scott, uh, in order to uh, be able to say that they were providing medical aid when, in fact, they were just trying to help these men enter the country. Uh, they argued that Scott's real intent is to thwart the Border Patrol at every turn. Let's go to Scott in his own words, talking about finding the remains of migrants who have died while crossing into the United States. This is a clip from The Intercept's mini-documentary titled Let Them Have Water. We went from finding human remains every other month to, like, finding five sets of human remains uh, on, a, on a single trip, hiking through the Growler Valley, uh, and then going back, you know, a week later and finding uh, two more sets of remains. And then on a single day of searching, finding, like, eight sets of remains and bodies of people who had died in adjacent areas of the bombing range and on Cabeza Prieta. So just this, like, scale of this crisis, of the humanitarian crisis and the missing persons crisis just blew wide open. So that's Scott Warren. Um, the government says this isn't about deaths, but since 2001, <clears throat> at least 3,000 migrants have been found dead in the southern Arizona desert. Thousands of others have disappeared. Activists say the numbers are probably much higher. Um, talk about the government saying it's not about deaths and, of course, Scott Warren's argument in the name of his organization, No More Deaths. Yeah, the government began this trial by arguing that this is not a case about humanitarian aid and deaths in the desert. This is a case about Scott Warren and Scott Warren's actions. But what happened in the days that followed is the government put on many, many arguments uh, about humanitarian aid and, and said that what No More Deaths and groups like it are, are doing is, is a political project. It's not a humanitarian project. That's false, that they, uh, they, their, their entire goal is uh, humanitarian aid. The government alleged that, in fact, these groups are political actors with political goals. It's important to keep in mind, when we're talking about all of this, that the deaths in the desert are the result of a policy that began some 25 years ago under the Clinton administration. It's called Prevention Through Deterrence. 
and under this strategy, uh, migrant populations are funneled into the deadliest parts of the desert. Um, and increasingly, in the last several years, that's been the Ajo Corridor, um, where Scott lives and works. And beginning in 2014, uh, Scott brought together a sort of network of humanitarian aid groups in the area to really start focusing on, on this region. And what they uncovered uh, was just a pattern of, of death and disappearance that really rivaled anything uh, else in the Sonoran Desert. So they started going out, dropping water, and looking often uh, for people who were reported missing or bodies that were reported. And they contributed to a historic increase in the number of remains and bodies found in that region during that particular time period. As that happened, the government uh, escalated its crackdown on their work. Well, I just want to turn to um, Amnesty International, America's director, uh, who's called for Warren's charges to be dropped in light of the mistrial. She said in a statement, quote, the mistrial in the case of Dr. Scott Warren sends a clear message that there are people in the USA who refuse to acquiesce to the government's attempts to criminalize compassion and humanitarian aid. As long as the USA and Mexico fail to protect the lives of migrants and asylum seekers between the two countries, human rights defenders like Scott Scott Warren must be allowed to continue their necessary and life-saving work, unhampered by politically motivated harassment and prosecution. So, Ryan, what do you think happens now? Well, now we wait. We see if the government is going to retry this case or not. But we should note that Scott Warren's prosecution uh, takes place uh, against a backdrop of of targeting of humanitarian aid workers, uh, immigrant rights advocates across the border. Uh, just this year, earlier this year, we saw uh, lawyers, activists, journalists in the Tijuana, San Diego area who had worked with uh, members of the migrant caravan, uh, targeted by a, a sweeping intelligence gathering operation carried out by CBP, uh, ICE, uh, and, and law enforcement in that area. So this is not confined just to Scott's case. It's part of the broader crackdown on immigrants uh, that we've seen under the Trump administration. Ryan Devereux, we want to thank you so much for being with us, staff reporter at The Intercept, where he covers immigration enforcement, the drug war, national security's most recent article, which we will link to at democracynow.org, felony trial of no more deaths, volunteer Scott Warren ends in mistrial. In May, he published Bodies in the Borderlands, an extensive investigation into Scott Warren's case. When we come back, outrage is mounting over the death of Laylene Polanco, a transgender Afro-Latinx woman who was found dead in a cell at Rikers Island on Friday. Stay with us.